This video is going to show you how you can run a Friedman test in R. I'm also going to show you how you can get an effect size for your Friedman test and do some post hoc tests. And then we'll do a quick bit of graphing at the end as well. To run this, we're going to have a couple of packages. We need the R um, statics package for our effect size. And for our graph, we're going to use the ggpowr package. To run the Friedman's test itself, we, can, we don't need to install any additional packages. So you need to install those packages if you haven't already done so. And if you have, then you can just pull them out of the library so they're ready to go in this session. The data set they're going to be look, looking at is called Friedman and it's a CSV file. So we're going to read that in. I'm just going to call it df. So we use our read CSV command. Don't need a package for this. That's in base R and we can read that in and let's have a look at the data so I can explain it to you. So here's our data set here. You can see we've got three columns. We've got ID, which is our participant IDs. We've got T, which is our grouping variable. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and rating here. Essentially what this study is, is a repeated measure study in which we gave people different types of tea. This comes from experience of going over to America and asking for tea and getting the worst imaginable things. So anyone from the UK or Ireland who's gone over to America and had tea have experienced this. Our participants were given three different types of tea. They were given property, for example, Yorkshire tea or something like that. And then they were given Lipton, which is the little bags of Lipton tea that seem to appear in American hotels, where you need about five tea bags to even get near a proper cover. And the third group is iced tea, which is just an abomination. So our participants drank each type of tea and then gave it a rating on how tasty they found that tea on a one to four scale. One meaning they didn't like it at all, four meaning they thought they really liked it a lot. So this data is what we call long form. So it's long form in as much as our participants appear three times in the data, once with property, once with Lipton tea, and once with iced tea, and then they give it the ratings. So it's long form because it's a very long data set because our participants appear multiple times. That's usually in our the optimal way of having repeated measures data. So we're interested to see if our participants like me find it, there's a big difference in the taste of our different tea types. So what we're going to quickly do first is we're just going to turn off scientific notation. If you've seen any of my videos, I always do this. So this gives you exact P values. And then we're going to label our factors. So our factors called T. It's got three levels, one, two, and three. And the labels for them are property, Lipton, and iced tea. So we can just label that. And then if we look at our data set now, we can see our T, which is our condition, is nicely labeled. So we can have a quick look at the data as well if we want. We can have a box plot. So we've got three different conditions. We can look at them separately. So by using our box plot command, and then we say we want to look at rating our dependent variable by our independent variable, which is t. And this gives us our box plot. So you can see on the box plot, we've got some very uneven distributions here. And as the data anyway is very highly ordinal, we should be doing a Friedman's test upon this data. So to run a Friedman's test is quite straightforward thing to do and um, although the command for it is a, is a bit of a departure from what we often use with dependent variable tilde and then the independent variable so this is the command that we use so we use friedman.test then we say y which is our dependent variable is the rating groups is our independent variable which is t and then we also have blocks the blocks here is ID, and this is basically how you're telling it it's repeated measures. You've got blocks. So our participants here, or ID variable here, is a block. 
So it's letting R know that this is repeated measures because everything's coming in blocks of people and these are the same people. So we don't have what we call independence of observations. Each row is not independent because it's the same participants here and then the same participant for these three and these three and so on and so on. So we just tell it that. So if you've got your data in long form, you'll need to have some form of way of telling R what participants or observations each line of data belongs to. So if we run that command, it gives us a nice, simple, straightforward output here. So it gives our Friedland chi-squared statistic, 17.2, our degrees of freedom, which is two, our de degrees of freedom for these models, is just K, number of conditions minus one, so our three conditions minus one is two, and there's our p-value, so we've got a highly significant difference between these groups. Now, of course, we always want to give flex sizes with our results. So to do that, using the Friedman underscore F size command, which is in the R statics package, and we tell it what data set we're using, the dependent variable, and then we do use the tilde command predicted by T. So that's what you may be more familiar with. So we say the data that we're using, DV, IV, and then we have this line in here. So this line isn't a one, it's not an I or anything like that, it's a little line. And then what's our grouping variable is here, and it's ID, so it's the same as that before. And if you see, it follows exactly the same order as our Friedman's test did. So if we run this, this is gonna give us our Kendall's coefficients of concordance. So we've got an um, effect size of our um, Kendall's coefficient of 0.43, and it does our nice little label, tells us it's got a moderate effect size, which is nice for when you're writing things up, so you can tell the reader it's a moderate effect size. We've got our Friedman's test written up there, it's relatively straightforward to write up. So we could just report the chi-squared statistic, the degrees of freedom, the p-value, and then at the end of that, we can put on our Kendall's coefficients of concordance. Of course, this is our omnibus test. This is just simply saying that there is an effect of T on ratings. So there is different T types do influence how people rate things. So if we want to look at this in more detail, then we need to do some pairwise comparisons. A nice simple way is using the pairwise.wilcox.test command. Nice and straightforward command. We just say df rating. So from our data frame, we take our dependent variables in rating, and then we put our independent variable in next, which is t from our data frame. Exact equals false. This will just stop it giving you a little error message. Um, it won't compute you exact p-values if you have any tied ranks. And we will have tied ranks. So we always just say exact equals false. And then p dot adjust dot method. So whether we want to do any adjustments. And here I've put none. There's no adjustments to our p value, so it's non corrected. So this is going to give us a little matrix of our pairwise comparisons. So this is the p value for the comparison between property and Lipton, and that's not statistically significant. Property compared to ice tea. That's statistically significant, it's highly di significantly different. And then Lipton compared to ice tea is significantly different as well. So what we're seeing here is our significant main effect is driven by the fact that ice tea is viewed as significantly worse than the other two T types. Now we could do a correction on this if you wanted. So instead of saying none, we just change it to Bonferroni, so if I run that, we've now got a Bonferroni adjusted here, so we can see that's much bigger, that's bigger but still significant, that's bigger and just about statistically significant if we're using 0 0.05 as our cutoff. We could also, as well, we could just do a little bit of graphing as well, so just to finish this off, I'm going to use um, this command here, which is ggboxplot.
So this comes from our GG Pubar package. And to get a little box plot for this, we can say, we give it our data frame that we're using. So I'll call it DF. X is T type, so our X axis, the axis along the bottom is the variable T. The Y axis, so it's one pointing up. If you can never remember it, just remember that Y points to the sky and you'll always remember it after that. That's our rating variable. Add jitter, which just gives us our dots um, on the graph. So each point is also done as a dot, which can be quite nice. Just, just look at the spread of the data. And then I've said color equals T. What this is going to do is simply it's going to color the box plots differently according to the variable T, so according to the X axis. So each box plot is going to be a different color. So if I run that, you can see it gives us this graph here. So the jitter gives us all these dots. And I've called the goal in a different color. Now, if we want, we don't have to stick with this default coloring. So just to show this, I'm just going to save this as a plot. So it's the same command as before, but I'm simply going to save it as a plot so we can run that. So if I run that and ask for the plot, it gives us the same plot as before. However, I can try some different color palettes. So using set palette, I can put my plot in there and tell that I want the color palette to be JCO. So if I run that, it gives me the JCO palette. I could instead ask for dark two. There we go, so the dark palette or um, the lancet colors. There we go, and there's that the lancet colors there. So we can make quite a nice little graph using these commands. The GG PubR package is basically a graph package that's meant to get things absolutely ready for publication. That's why it has different color codes according to journals. So it's worth looking at the set palette command for that if you are making something for a specific journal. But that's it really. It's quite a straightforward procedure to go through. There are some other methods um, in which you could do um, these comparisons, but I think that is probably the simplest one. As ever, all the data and code for this can be found in the link below the video.